Master data is often described as data that is shared between business teams and systems. And then master data management is the process through which you maintain your master data's consistency. Instead of talking about these terms, let's look at how we support MDM with our product, EBX5. And with that, let's look at some master data. First stop, customer. And what I'm gonna do, rather than search the table, I'm actually gonna use our handy dandy search function. We'll to say search, and let's look at GCAS. So on this particular customer record, what do we see? We see the three main types of master data. We see identifiers, account number, name, we pop over into additional information, things like third party IDs, such as DUNS numbers. We also see attributes, and attributes can include things such as SICs, NAICS codes, these are industry classifications, and relationships. Here we have a relationship between GCAS and GE Capital Aviation Funding, or its parent. Within EBX, we treat relationships in the same way that we treat attributes and identifiers. It's a form of master data that needs to be managed. And in this case, this is a very simple intro-domain relationship. And what can we do with these very simple intro-domain relationships? Well, we can build a corporate hierarchy. In EBX5, every relationship can be used to build a hierarchy. So we're going to go ahead and follow the relationship the account has with itself on legal parents. And then what we see is we see the entire GE corporate hierarchy here. And you'll notice it's unbalanced. An unbalanced hierarchy is one in which each node has a varying number of generations beneath it. Now it's a pretty big hierarchy. It's about 5,000 items. So we're going to search for aircraft because I know GCAS is in there. And we're also going to expand all. And so what do we see? Well, here it is. GCAS aircraft leasing belongs to capital aviation funding, financial funding, etc., all the way up. Because these hierarchies are based in relationships, and because EBX is mastering these relationships, if we make changes to the relationships, the hierarchies will change. And so let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and stack another search. So I'm going to stack GCAS onto aircraft, and we see that it only has one parent right now. But I'm going to go in, and I'm going to add a new parent to GCAS. I'm going to add it the GE Capital International Holdings Corporation. I'm going to add that, save and close. And what do we see? We see GCAS now appear in two places in the hierarchy. Here I've shown you a very simple use of an intra-domain relationship. But we talk about EBX5 as a multi-domain MDM. Well, what does that mean? It means three simple things. You need to be able to model any domain. You need to be able to support workflows that are distributed across multiple business teams. And you need to be able to create multi-domain or inter-domain connections. Now, if you're thinking, can we use these multi-domain connections to create alternate hierarchies? You're absolutely correct. Any relationship in EBX5 can be used to create a hierarchy. And so this is how we support alternate hierarchies. And by connecting rather than copying the data in the underlying domains, we avoid all synchronization issues. Any update to the underlying data gets automatically reflected in the hierarchy. Inheritance is another way to create alternate hierarchies. Inherited data sets inherit their values and or relationships from their parents. Overriding relationships gives you wholly different hierarchies, illustrating corporate change, such as a sale of an asset. Overriding values is one way to internationalize. And as you can see, EBX5 supports UTF-8. Being a multi-domain MDM means facilitating multi-domain hierarchy management, but what else? We think workflow is a big part of it. After all, different parties are responsible and accountable for the consistency of master data in each domain. For certain kinds of master data, we're looking at employee as an employee onboarding process, Matching is required to check for uniqueness. EBX5 supports survivorship, auto-merge based on trusted systems, and what you see here, quality managed by an individual or data steward, or stewardship. In this case, the steward is choosing how to merge the two different records. For information on how these records came together, we have to look at the policies page. And that's what we see here. And in EBX, you can review the policies and the algorithms that are used to determine the match score. Versioning is required to manage multi-domain master data. Data spaces in EBX5 provides the isolation that can be used to separate by domain, as you see here, and separate a domain by time, as you see here. And this is why some analysts have said that EBX5 supports isolation in two dimensions. EBX5 also provides tools to compare versions. In each one of these highlights you see represents an add, update, or delete. Drilling down into the record, you can actually see what changed. Here, the definition and the notes. And then there's also historization. This provides playback and rollback to prior versions and illustrates who's changed what when. 
Another element of the lifecycle support is the need to handle models and model revisions over time. With modeling in EBX5, the models are more than documentation. Any change to a model upon publication appears in the interface immediately. This includes both system interfaces, data services, as well as user interfaces or the authoring screens. This cuts down on your development time. Finally, there's integration and distribution. Upstream and downstream systems most commonly integrate with EBX5 using our web services, which are generated from the models, and these web services provide data, workflow, and administrative services. Alternatively, a uh, scheduled file-based integration can also be used. Distribution to us means getting master data into the hands of your business teams, and that means support for portals, applications, files, and of course things such as Excel. In this video, we showed you how EBX5 meets the requirements of MDM. Some of the highlights? First off, we believe that it's more than values. It's the connections or the relationships between your domains. How do your customers tie to product? How do they tie to geographies, perhaps industries, or even financial accounts? The fact that it's shared between business teams means that workflow is required. Because you don't know how technically sophisticated your stewards are, you need to have an MDM platform it's easy to use, easy to learn, otherwise you won't get adoption, and without adoption your program won't be successful. Finally, Master Data Management is a governance process, so the software needs to support the entire lifecycle end-to-end. -end. And I think we showed you highlights of that in terms of modeling, versioning, and of course integration distribution. So that's in a nutshell. I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions, feel free to visit us on the web at www.orchestrenetworks.com. Thanks and have a great day.